Okay, chapter 10 of My Teacher Funk the Planet is called Evacuate. I crouched on the stairway and listened as Duncan opened the door. Susan stood one step behind me, her hand on my shoulder. Holy Moses, cried the man who had been demanding to be let in. It's Duncan, it's Duncan Dovel. We've been wondering where you were hiding. We got a call about an explosion in here. Uh, what have you been doing? Blowing off dynamite? He must be Big Julie's burp, whispered Susan, leaning closer to close to my ear. I'm not doing anything, Duncan replied sullenly. Not doing anything but breaking into poor Miss Carpoo's house while she's out of town, said a new voice. Anyone else in here with you? Yeah, sneered Duncan. A bunch of aliens. Susan tied her grip on my shoulder, but I knew what Duncan was doing. He figured if he made the men angry, they might hustle him off without coming inside. For a moment, it looked like his ploy would work. Come on, kid, said the second man. We're taking you home. Then the first man spoke again. Better take a look inside, Andy. Make sure the kid hadn't trashed the place. Susan and, I, Susan and I began backing up the stairs as Andy came through the door. Suddenly, I realized something was different about the house. I couldn't figure out what it was until I realized I couldn't hear Big Julie's breathing. Wondering if he was holding his breath, I took another step backward and almost screamed when I bumped into Broxholm, who was crouched at the top of the stairs. Broxholm put a finger to his lips, then lifted me to the top of the stairs. Turning around, he picked up Susan and set her next to me. I could hear Andy walking around below us. Suddenly, he shouted, Yuck! What is this? I wondered what he had found until I glanced at Creeblim. The worried writhing of her hair told me the problem. Her poot was still on the kitchen table. I hoped the thing had enough sense to stay in its blob form. That way it would just look like a gob of disgusting goo. If it lifted its head and went, poot, Andy might f really freak out. I waited to hear a scream, but nothing. After a moment, Andy's footsteps started down the hall. Was he going to open all the doors? If so, he was in for a big surprise when he got to Big Julie's room. I glanced behind me. Creeblin was pulling on a mask, a non-Betty Lou Carpu face. I figured she was going to try it to divert Andy's investigation. But before she could move, Duncan screamed, Let go of me, you big brute! Hey, bellowed the cop. Hey, watch it, kid. Ow! I smiled to myself. Duncan's life as a jerk hadn't been entirely wasted. He had just kicked the guy holding him in the shins in order to draw Andy's attention away from the house. I blinked and shook my head. How did I know what Duncan had just done and why he had done it? A familiar wave of dizziness passed through me. Before I could even think of fainting, we heard a scream. Ah! cried Andy, sounding a lot like Duncan the had, the, had the day he had Sounding a lot like Duncan had the day he accidentally turned on the communication device that went to the alien ship. His scream was interrupted by a rush of wind as Big Julie's, as Big Julie let out his breath. I think the thudding sound was that followed was Andy getting blown against a wall. A swamp-like stench filled the house. Next came the sound of someone throwing up, then running footsteps as Andy raced along the hall. We've got to get out of here. He screamed as he burst through the front door. Why? asked the other guy. What's going on? Don't ask. Don't talk. Just get out of here. Let me go, yelled Duncan. Hey, let me go! I don't want to get in the car with you guys. The men ignored the, his complaints. Seconds later, we heard the car start, then race away. Plevit, said Creeblim. What do we do now? asked Susan. Evacuate, said Boxholm. Everything that might provide even a hint... That we have been here has to go. Starting with me, rumbled Big Julie. Yes, starting with you, shouted Broxholm. The next half hour was a blur as we rushed to, the, to load the alien's equipment into Creeblim's saucer. Susan and I took turns watching at the front windows for any sign of the police. It was hard to tell when they might return. It depended on how scared they were and what kind of weapons and how much manpower they decided to gather. If we had been living in a, che in a cheap horror movie... They would have been back soon, with just a few men, men and some guns. But Kennetuck Falls had already had one experience with aliens. They were not apt to take this lightly. I saw something slouching down the hall behind me. 
I turned to get a better look and turned back with a shudder when I realized it was a piece of Big Julie. Heading for the transport be beam that would take it back to the New Jersey. I wondered what we would be doing next. Would we establish another base of operations, or would the mission be canceled altogether? If that happened, what would the alien council decide to do about Earth? A car pulled out pulled up outside. It didn't park right in the front of the house, but stopped where the driver would have clear would have a clear view of the place. A minute later, another car pulled up. We're being watched, I said. Creeblem joined up joined me at the window. Blevins, she whispered. One more load, said Broxholm. Peter, Susan, grab those components. Let's see if we can do this in one trip. Terrified that the police could break in before we could make our escape, I picked up the things Broxholm had pointed to and headed for the secret cellar. Susan was right behind me. Peter, she said, this is really going to mess things up. We've got to do something. That was Susan. Ten thousand planets trying to figure out what to do about Earth, and she feels it's her respons her personal responsibility to deal with the situation. Any suggestions? I asked. Not yet, said Susan. Soon, Treblem joined us in the secret cellar. We finished loading the saucer while Broxholm used a pencil-sized laser beam to seal the door so no one could enter the space we were about to leave. As soon as we were all in our places on the saucer, Creeblem set the controls. We rolled forward. The backyard lifted. We shot into the air. As soon as we did, we heard a roar beneath us. The police were shooting at the house. I knew they were afraid. I was afraid, too. But I didn't think this would be taken as good as a good sign by the Interplanetary Council. Well, that was the least of our problems at the moment. What are we going to do about Duncan? I asked as we soared into the sky. Creeblem's hair waved in distress. I don't know. If he talks about what we're doing, it could cause a great disruption. If things get too messy, the council may simply call off the mission. And if that happens, Susan asked, let's just say we'd better find Duncan, said Roxholm. His words gave me a shiver. I looked at the, wor the world below and thought about the button. The end of the planet seems to be getting closer by the minute. Uh, that's the end of chapter 10. The next chapter is chapter 11 called Duncan? Duncan? Who's got the Duncan? Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I guess we'll find out in the next one. See ya!